Hello YouTube, hello subscribers. Um, you are probably wondering why I look a little bit strange this time using my headset. Well, the uh, built-in microphone of my webcam is not working anymore, so I use this headset, which I usually use while talking on Skype. Well, the topic of this little video will be 3D photography and especially anaglyph pictures. 3D photography was very popular in the 50s and 60s. You could buy special cameras. Um, the Russians, they were very famous for building 3D cameras. But nowadays with the digital camera, well, it's much more easier to take 3D pictures. And uh, this is what I will going to talk about in this video. I'll probably split this up in two or three parts, I don't know. Um, usually I don't talk in English, of course, so um, I have to think a little bit in advance what I'm going to say and to explain. Okay, I don't want to go really deep into 3D photography. I just like to give you an overview and you can uh, look up yourself uh, whether you find interest in it. There are lots of web pages out there and uh, lots of information to find, so there shouldn't be any problem at all to find more deeper stuff. Uh, maybe you can even buy a book. Okay, yeah, I said that I like to only explain a little bit about uh, anaglyph pictures. So what you have to have is a special kind of glass. Uh, this one is made of hard plastic. This is the glass that you need to watch the anaglyph pictures, which is a red one and a Cyan magenta. I don't know how to pronounce it in English, but it's not red and blue. It's a bluish. So be careful. There is another one out which is blue, but that's not the right one. Um, you also can find these uh, made out of uh, paper or carton, which is much cheaper, like 50 cents, maybe a dollar, but uh, not more. So you need these glasses to watch 3D anaglyphs. Okay, um, I like to give you now an overview on what can be done uh, with one camera and two cameras and the special setup. Um, of course, if you have not two left hands, as we say, uh, you can uh, build a lot yourself. Uh, you don't need to buy all the stuff. Of course, you have to have a digital camera. Uh, okay, take a look in the next parts um, to come. And, uh, well, enjoy. Now I will explain the method that you use or can use if you have only one camera available. This is called the Chacha method. Um, and it goes like the following. You take your camera and what you do is you take two pictures. The first picture you take while putting your whole body weight onto your left foot and then you change your whole body weight towards your right foot and take the second picture. And the movement between the two foot, foot, yeah, two feet, two feet is about the eye distance of 65 millimeters or two and a half inch. So I show it to you. This would be standing on two feet. Now you shift towards the left foot with your body weight and towards the right foot and you take a second picture. This method has a disadvantage. You can only take pictures of static objects. Um, it also is a little bit tricky because uh, while you step on one to the other foot. Um, as you can see on my hands right here, it is very hard to keep the level of your camera. So while you shift, it should be done horizontally, like this, and no up and down movement. It needs a little bit practice, but it can be done. Uh, if you take 10 or 20 pictures, I'm sure you, you get a hang of it. Well, there's also one thing that you have to take in consideration, which is the autofocus of your camera settings. Um, I would suggest that you first uh, switch off the autofocus and focus on infinity. 
So you need a little bit knowledge of the camera that you are handling, and um, yeah, keep it in mind. I need you the cha cha method, and uh, now I'm going to show you what the sliding bar method is. Um, you also need only one digital camera, and uh, this is a sliding bar that I've made myself a couple of years ago. There are sliding bars that you can buy, but uh, I personally don't like them because they don't fit on what I would like to do. So this I made myself out of aluminum profiles. It has a uh, water leveler. Oh, water leveler. This is a quick connection for the digital camera. Some measurements and a ruler that can be moved separately and an extension for a slave flash. The massive flash is uh, the built-in flash on the camera and of course you can move this one back and forth and for close-up photography I have attached a micrometer, a little micrometer which enables me to move the camera millimeter by millimeter or even a tenth of a millimeter. Okay, this is what it looks like if all the equipment is mounted onto the sliding bar. This one is the slave flash directed towards the ceiling and this is the massive flash, built-in camera flash and this one is a 90 degree view finder which is very helpful for taking close-up photography and of course the digital camera and uh, now I can move this back and forth and I can move this one back and forth so this of course needs to be now mounted onto a heavy tripod because it is heavy so the tripod needs to be really good I have a Manfrotto which is an awesome brand and yeah you can't buy this one, you can only build it yourself.